Ableton updates live to version 11.2. Welcome to Music Gears, where we bring you the latest info on new music instruments, software, and other gear from around the world. Ableton has announced the release of Live 11.2. This free update delivers improvements to the Reverb device, a standard device in every live edition. It's been refreshed with a modernized UI, improved usability, and subtle sound improvements. Live 11.2 also introduces AUV3 support, making more plugins available to music makers using Mac computers with Apple Silicon chips. If you already own a Live 11 license, the Live 11.2 update is free for you. New features and improvements. Capture MIDI. Capture results are no longer influenced by the song tempo set by the target track's previous capture attempts. When Liv's transport is running, Capture MIDI will keep longer phrases in captured clips. Control surfaces. In the Launch Key 3 Malawian Quatch's control surface script, the quantize button can now quantize clips in session or arrangement view. The LaunchKey 3 Malawian Quatch's control surface script now also works with the LaunchKey 88. On the PreSonus Atom SQ, it is now possible to scroll between device parameter banks by holding the bank navigation buttons down. In the Atom SQ control surface script, it is now possible to control the master track volume and pan in song mode when the master track is selected. The encoder sensitivity for the Atom SQ control surface script has been refined to better match the parameters they control. Additionally, the encoders can be used to fine-tune parameter values when the shift button is pressed. Core library. Added audio and MIDI clips to session view in Liv's demo song. In the DS drum rack preset, devices contained in the selected chain are now always shown by default. Interface. The icons in Liv's preferences and dialogues have been improved. Updated the appearance of the record slash warp slash launch tab in Liv's preferences. The error dialog window that appears when loading a live set with disabled plugins now displays the track name before the timestamp. Live now shows different icons for live clip. ALC, files that distinguish between audio and MIDI content in the browser. When renaming tracks tab, will navigate to the next track or chain header, while Shift tab navigates to the previous track or chain header. Value ranges on vertical rulers in the MIDI note editor are now always displayed as two values stacked vertically. Improved drag and drop behavior within list views, such as the groove pool and device chains. Instead of always being inserted before the target item, dropped items will now be placed dynamically depending on which half of the target item the cursor hovers over. In addition, the copy modifier, Alt, now works more consistently. When number lock is switched off on Windows, the number pad arrows, PG up, PIG down, home, and end keys now function as expected. Disabled devices now display an alert icon above error messages in device view. When exporting multiple tracks, the option to also export video at the same time is now deactivated in the Export Audio Video dialog. Updated various software texts. Updated various help view lessons. Updated various software text and help view lesson translations in German, Spanish, French, Italian, Japanese, and simplified Chinese. Max for Live. Updated the bundled Max build to version 8.3.1. For the changelog, visit cycling74.com. Live. Banks added warnings to explain non reactivity in Max only. Dynamic colors changed label of live underscore control underscore FG to text slash icon. Dweb slash CEF fixed usage in Max for live windows. Live. Asterisk UI objects updated color code. Live. Banks, Banks configuration is retained if device is opened and saved in Max. Live. Comment, line count is preserved. Live. Gain at orientation 1 typed in a box works as expected. Live. Gain, auto adapts when transforming to MC version. Live. Observer, fixed value output after opening slash closing Max editor. 
Crosspatch works in the context of a Max for Live device hosted in Live. Max for Live slash Gen improved fixes for intermittent crashes. A new property in the Max for Live API allows users to observe the number of visible macro controls for a rack device. Audio driver input and output latencies are now taken into account for Max for Live devices that contain audio routings to external targets. If needed, users can revert to the previous behavior by using the Disable M4L Routing Compensation Debug option in an options. TXT file. The time underscore signature underscore numerator, time underscore signature underscore denominator, time underscore signature underscore enabled and tempo underscore enabled properties are now available in the Max for Live API. Corrected descriptions for the properties have also been added. Improved and updated the scale underscore name and scale underscore intervals descriptions in the Max for Live API. New devices and device improvements. Reverb. The Reverb Devices interface has been updated with a fresh design. The Reverb Devices density and quality parameters have been renamed to Diffusion and Density. The parameter values for density, previously quality, have also been changed from Eco, Mid, and High to Sparse, Low, Mid, and High. Sparse mode allows for lower CPU usage. Added a smooth drop-down menu to the Reverb Device. You can now specify how the size parameter responds when changed using the smooth options None, Slow, or Fast. Setting smooth to None means that some artifacts may occur when changing the size parameter values. The slow and fast options ensure that new delay times are updated over a specific period of time, resulting in a more musical sound. Added a switchable filter type to the high filter in Reverb's Diffusion Network. You can choose between a one-pole low-pass filter or a low-shelf filter. Optimized for better CPU performance. Tuner. The tuner device now includes three new options for note spellings. You can access a menu with these options when you right-click anywhere within tuner's UI. Sharps, C-sharp. Flats, D. Sharps and flats, C-sharp slash D. It is now possible to zoom out to a full octave in Tuner's histogram view by clicking the interface and dragging the cursor horizontally. In the Phaser Flanger device, the phase parameter of the LFO now has a default value of 180 degrees. The Excitator section of the Tension device is now called Exciter in Live and on Push. A context menu option for a high-quality mode has been added to the Delay device. Switching off high quality uses less CPU resources. The channel EQ device now uses less CPU resources. Presets containing the saturator device now run with improved CPU usage. Inactive visualization data will no longer be sent in the wavetable and phaser devices, resulting in slightly improved performance. When mapping and unmapping device parameters to macros, the map slash unmap labels now appear as expected. A high-quality option has been added to the right-click, win, forward slash, control-click, Mac, context menu of the Redux device. Using Redux with high-quality switched off saves some extra CPU. Plugins. Added native support for AUV3 plugins on macOS 10.15 or higher. Liv's preferences now include options to enable both AUV2 and AUV3 plugins. Plugin errors are now shown in Liv's status bar, along with a linked detailed error report. If the connection to an AUV3 plugin gets lost, an error message will be displayed. The plugin will also be disabled, the output muted, and the plugin window closed. Push. On Push 2, the parameter names of the AAS devices, Analog, Collision, Tension and Electric, have been improved and aligned with the UI for readability. Session view improvements. It is now possible to simultaneously rename multiple rack chains in session view. When navigating tracks and device chains using the left arrow key in session view, navigation will stop at the first track header as expected. Setup. To avoid incompatibilities, you will be asked to save live sets created with an older version of live as a new file in live 11.2. 
renamed the customization section of Live's preferences to display customization, which now also includes the zoom display setting. Metal rendering is now enabled on Mac OS by default to improve UI rendering performance. To deactivate this, use the options. TXT entry disable graphics hardware acceleration. Bug fixes. Live bug fixes. Improved lives performance when selecting or deselecting many clips. On Mac OS, lives UI would sometimes show graphical errors after opening live on a high DPI monitor, changing the zoom display settings to a value other than 100%, and moving the window to a low DPI monitor. Fixed the appearance of the phaser flanger device's ENV fall parameter when the device is deactivated. Fixed a bug that would stop the manual freeze output when switching the spectral time device's freezer fade shape from crossfade to envelope mode. Fixed an issue that caused the corpus device to output silence when using larger buffer sizes on Windows. Added info texts for the FRZ delay and daily FRZ toggles in the spectral time device. Added a missing info text for the ENV AMT parameter in collisions noise filter section. Fixed some issues with the LFO and MPE control devices. Previously, live would crash when routing an EXT. Instruments MIDI output to an MPE routing target if the tracks device chain also contained a plugin, max for live device, or certain built-in audio effects. The drop-down menu for reverb's density parameter is now 2px wider to avoid cutting off the word sparse. Fixed an issue that could cause an invalid selection when selecting all chains in a drum rack in session view. On Windows, Live's UI now refreshes as expected after tapping Alt to open the main menu. Anytime the clip detail view panels are arranged vertically, Live now opens the envelopes panel and scrolls it into view when creating per step automation on push or using the show automation or show modulation context menu entries on a parameter. Opening a context menu on Windows with the keyboard shortcut, Shift, F10, no longer changes the time selection in arrangement view, session scene selection, or browser selection. On Windows, opening a context menu with the Shift, F10, keyboard shortcut no longer changes the selected session track header or session clip. Fixed an issue that could cause artifacts when using the complex or complex pro warping mode on clips that were only slightly warped. Fixed an issue that caused unnecessary freeze tail clips when freezing and flattening clips with small gaps between them. Fixed a bug that caused MIDI notes and audio waveforms to jiggle slightly when adjusting clip edges in arrangement view. Selecting a velocity or probability marker and typing in a number sets the value as expected. When rack macro controls and chains are unfolded, the RAND and MAP buttons are now properly aligned. When showing or hiding chains in a rack, the buttons would previously move up and down depending on the view shown. These buttons are now evenly spaced at all times. Fixed an issue that caused session clips to be added over arrangement clips when copying a track in session view and pasting it into arrangement view. Fixed an issue that caused inconsistent time signatures when launching scenes with specific time signatures in session view, and then quickly going back to the arrangement view. This issue could also cause the re-enable automation button to become stuck. When a track is frozen, the velocity range slider will now freeze as expected in MIDI clips. Fixed an issue that prevented the keyboard shortcut to expand clip view, Control, Alt, E, Win, forward slash, CMD, OPT, E, M, A, C, from working when switching from session view to arrangement view, or vice versa, when no clip was selected. Selecting time in the MIDI Velocity Editor now works as expected when multi-clip editing. When a user changes the MIDI Envelope Auto Reset option in a set, they will be prompted to save the changes when they close the set or quit lev. Fixed an issue that caused live to hang when zooming out of a clip with a small loop region that was being recorded. Fixed a crash that occurred when loading certain live sets containing more than 1,000 tracks. Fixed a crash that occurred when using the header area of a time selection to select time in a MIDI clip when in the expression tab. Fixed a potential crash when opening old live sets that contained devices that have since been removed from live. 
AU plugins are now informed about silent inputs so that they can release CPU resources and report output silence if possible. This will allow any device in the device chain after the AU plugin to release CPU resources as well. Fixed an issue that caused note feedback to break when using certain control surface script interactions, such as repeatedly switching the note layout on push while a MIDI clip was playing. Fixed an issue that inadvertently showed blue hand icons and device locking options for particular device control features not available in some control surface scripts. Fixed a bug that kept internal buffers of VST3 plugins from resetting properly. As a result of this fix, lingering signals, like reverb and delay tails, are now reset before audio export starts. Lingering signals can also be cut off quickly by clicking the stop button three times. Fixed an issue with certain VST3 plugins that created unwanted artifacts in rendered audio. Fixed a crash that occurred when loading a live set with plugin automation on the master track or on a return or group track. Live no longer hangs when opening a drop-down menu while Grammarly is running. Fixed a crash that would occur when VST plugins requested the dedicated GPU, or when the user changed the macOS battery automatic graphics switching preference. Fixed a bug that caused silence and or hanging notes when recording MIDI notes into clips that already contained those same notes. Improved high DPI support for VST3 plugins on Windows. Plugins that support high DPI and iPlugView content scale should be the correct size. Plugins that have their own resizing logic should not resize when the user drags the window around. Plugin windows are instantiated with the correct size in both scaled and non-scaled modes. Plugins that support host-initiated resizing are interrogated by calling check size constraint in the correct place. Plugins that support host-initiated resizing can be maximized by double-clicking on the title bar. Fixed a potential crash on Windows that occurred when closing Live right before the program tried to install default packs. Fixed an issue with various control surface scripts that caused clip launch button LEDs to be in an incorrect state when changing the input type of a track. When using the Atom, Atom SQ, and Phantom control surface scripts, ARM button LEDs now reflect a track's implicit armed state. Fixed an issue in the SL underscore MKII control surface script that resulted in incorrect LED button states when exiting drum mode. Fixed a crash when loading a corrupt live set containing non-unique pointy IDs. Live now recognizes if the set is corrupt and displays a corresponding error message. Users can reach out to support to see if their sets can be repaired. Fixed a bug where context menus would close abruptly if voice control was enabled on system settings on macOS. Switching between session and arrangement view while a launched clip is playing on push will now always display the clip as expected. Previously, Live would crash when deleting an instance of Simpler from a drum rack pad while the Simpler's envelopes view was visible on push. Previously, Live would crash when using the extract chains command on a drum rack chain that had automation or modulation for the chain send level. Fixed an issue that deselect AU plugins after duplicating a selected plugin. Fixed a crash that sometimes occurred when loading a plugin that could not instantiate its presets. Fixed an issue that caused Live's menu bar to become invisible after deleting all video clips if the video window was in full screen mode on macOS. Fixed a crash that occurred when dragging and dropping another live set with group tracks into session view as a new scene in certain circumstances. Max for live bug fixes. Fixed a bug where adding expression control would create unnecessary undo steps. Fixed an issue that caused Shaper MIDI to produce unnecessary undo steps. Fixed an issue that resulted in incorrect undo values when using a line delay in distance mode. Please click the like button if you found this helpful, and if you'd like to stay informed on the latest in music gear releases and limited time discount offers, please subscribe. Thanks for joining us.